Hello, we're back. I'm going to start with it, and I? Go on then. I'm going to start. start. So I'll, I'll say, um, I hope loads of you are watching, but even though I know that barely any of you are watching, so go and just tell people about it. Sure. There you go. That's a, the it's a catchy line. It's going to go, that'll be on a t-shirt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, your, one of your t-shirts, probably. One of mine, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, It'll be all ripped as well on that, because that's the expensive ones all ripped, aren't they? Well, this one's not ripped. No, I didn't say that one is, but... No, you mean, general. you're referring yeah. to the other one that I wear. I am. Yeah. Anyway, we've done a mic from Bice to Savannah. Thank you for uh, for tuning in. Go follow us on Instagram. That's always a good thing. Yeah, Mike Biceps Banter, Dan Biceps Banter. Pretty pretty self explanatory, really. Yeah. Easy. Designed that way. So Yeah, simpletons like us, isn't it? For, it is. For that. Anyway, so we're here to share our journey through how we built our business, how we've done those sorts of things um, for you guys so that you don't get ripped off by business mentors out there who are giving shit advice away and charging you for it. We thought we'd give away better advice and give it away for free. So yeah, it's not? pretty much everything that we do or have done um, to, I guess, build what, what we have, um, which is a current business which, which has got nearly 400 clients within it uh, and ever expanding. Uh, we currently have four amazing coaches and a team. Uh, well, we I'm have amazing is a strong word. I mean, they're all right. They're all right. They're, they're all right. okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, we've got a couple of other employees, I guess we could class, you know, Chris, the copywriter. Um, Give away our secrets. Yeah. We'll talk about copywriting and email marketing and stuff and outsourcing in a bit. And we've got another guy who runs the, the group social media and stuff like that. So that's kind of maybe why you might want to, you know, listen to some of the things that we we have to say. Uh, a lot nice. of it is rubbish, so you might have to filter some of it, but... Um, this, yeah. uh, this one, what are, we, what are we talking about? So today we're talking about why, with our one-to-one -one clients, we do video check-ins and why we think video check-ins are valuable, uh, both from the client and from the coach. So in terms of online coaching nowadays, there is a lot of chat um, from business mentors and stuff about leveraging your time, how you should be minimizing the amount of time you spend talking to your clients, minimizing the amount of time you check in with them, and basically minimizing all contact with them, um, and then wondering why they leave after three months. Um, but yeah, basically we're here to talk you through how we do things, how we do check-ins, but also why we do them this way and why we believe that has led to us having quite a long, again, lifetime customer value and why clients stick around and all those sorts of things that we think is really important when it comes to coaching because, when it comes to coaching, your bread and butter is getting results, people. It is dealing with your clients and that will see you have a superior business in the future. I don't understand how business mentors are teaching that you should have less contact with your clients and less time with them and less... They, 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 class, <laughs> they it. class it as scale. Um, <laughs> yeah. But it, it's just like, it's almost like they've been reading business for dummies, um, like the books. It's That's not scale. That's just watering down your service. If you're going mm. to scale you create another product that doesn't water down your current service, which your clients have paid for. Um, you, yeah. you scale, for example, we use a group coaching system where people understand that it's group coaching. Um, it's not missold, like some business mentors. Oh. Um, but people understand it's group coaching and it's pretty upfront with, with what it is. And then that is priced co accordingly at a lower price. And then yeah. we upsell into one-to-one -one coaching. Um, <clears throat> so it's, uh, it's fascinating that it's all about scale and leveraging time like like I, I don't know somebody's read the four hour work week or whatever and um and now it's about trying to leverage time leverage your time back when you've actually built something not at the beginning like it's all about how little can you talk to your client by the mm -hmm. way your client we talk about client as a number talk to your clients it's kind of like a derogatory dis disrespectful way to talk about people that paying you their hard-earned cash mm -hmm. it's like okay what a novel idea might be thinking, do you know what? This person's trusted me. They could have gone to anybody else. They've trusted me. I'm really grateful for that. I really appreciate that. So I'm going to go above and beyond to make sure that they see the changes that they've essentially paid me for and, and they've, they've trusted in me. And that's how I feel about, and I'm not even joking about it. That's how I feel about every single person that works with me. And don't get me wrong. Sometimes you connect more with certain clients and stuff like that. That's okay. But I'm truly, truly grateful to anybody that comes in and pays me their hard-earned money and goes, Mike, out of everybody, I'm going to trust you with it. But unfortunately, in this industry, it's uh, it's now a, fuck, great, they're through the door. Cool. How little, where's the next one? Yeah, where's the next one? And how little can I can I talk to them? Yeah. Fuck me. It's one of those things as well where... where Mentors are teaching you to rush through check-ins, you know, and, and coaches are starting to see them as an inconvenience. Like coaches are starting to see their clients as an inconvenience when they build a business. And it's just a bit of an odd situation to be in. Like the one thing that pays your income, pays your, um, you know, your, your for your future effectively is your the bit you're trying to rush through and the bit you're trying to minimize. Yeah. And your, again- Your job, yeah. Yeah, and whose interest is it in for, for you to have that and for 
for you to get more clients through the door and, and have less time working with them. The business mentors, because they then screenshot the Stripe account for that month. Yeah, they took on 20 people. Yeah, but they can't coach those 20 people. Yeah. But they've taken them on, so it doesn't matter. They, they'll, they'll share that. And for us, it's one of those things where we genuinely believe that if you start focusing more on your clients, you start focusing more on the amount of time you're giving to them, you understand that they're a human being, not a robot. Because again, there's this whole conception where um, like coaches are just handing out the macros and the calories. See you next week. Mm. Is that it, is it? Is that, is that all we're doing these days? Not, not, we're not working with robots. If we had a robot, that would work great. But you're not working with robots. You're working with human beings. And you need to understand that a lot of the problems people have around food and training is emotional. It's stress-related, schedule-related. None of that can be given out in calories and macros. That's, you need to understand the human being on a very, very human level. So the reason that we think that coaches get this wrong on check-ins is that they're using type form. They're using Google forms. They're using written check-ins. They're using emails. And... When, you, when clients do that and they send you that information and you send it them back, there is zero personal connection. Mm. It, I say zero, a minuscule personal connection with that. It's very, very hard to get across body language, tone of voice, um, all that sort of stuff over an email. It's, it's actually impossible. <laughs> it's not very hard. It's actually impossible. But it is, you don't get a true reflection of where that person is at at that point in time. No matter what questions you ask, how many times have you got a check-in format from someone and you've put there like, how did you feel this week? And they've just put, great. Brilliant. It, How's that going to help it, you? It really surprised me because um, we were kind of going off on one last week and there was a lot about business mentors and people coming forwards. And, and we actually put out something similar to this video about how we coach. Well, I, I wrote down how we coach. I don't know whether you did as well. Like, And, and I basically said how we coach is um, we, on, we onboard somebody, we give bespoke training programming, nutrition programming, um, video updates uh, from their end and from our end. Um, you know, form critique and things like that, and, and the amount of response is like, oh, what you they, your clients send you a video a, as well, and I I was just like, yeah, but we've been told that you you, you need to keep your check ins down to under two minutes. No, that's incorrect. Um, and it's like, yeah, of course I give my clients video check ins, and of course I'm not going to limit the amount of time that they talk because it's in that freedom of speech that other things come out, yeah. which enables you to be able to coach them better and build a better trust bond, relationship, form a genuine relationship with these people. I bet you your client results will get better through it. 100%. I promise you. Because when we sit there at check-ins and we're watching somebody talk, like Dan said there, you can see tone of voice. You can see if somebody's not all there or somebody's there's, there's something going on. And it's harder to lie if you're on camera, as daft as it sounds. It's easy on a check-in form to just skirt over something that may or may not have happened or they're not telling you the whole thing whereas you'd be surprised what comes out with the freedom of, of, of speech with the freedom of talk and they're just able to almost just reflect on their week it's almost a, f a form of like counseling to them form of therapy it's, it's a cathartic thing and they actually enjoy doing that and from a coach's perspective it's so much better because you're then building that bond and you're able to see completely what's going on and then you're able to coach it. Yeah. Like, that's the thing. And then when we film video check-in, so talk, talk to them about how what you would go through on a video check-in and then you might be able to see why this is so valuable. So basically, when, when it comes to the clients, so we'll watch their video all the way through alongside looking over their stats and over their spreadsheet, over their train, all that sort of stuff. And you're basically looking out for any of these sort of little like red flags, I suppose, compared to what they normally do. So the amount of times you get to one and you go, and you might have a weekend where they feel no calories in and they're just saying, oh yeah, you know, it was okay. Just did this, just did that. But then there could be another week where they've had the same thing where they've had a weekend of blank calories. You go, yeah, had a bit of a shit weekend, you know, split with a partner, whatever it is. But again, it's those things that you're looking out for. Like people wouldn't say that as much on an email or anything like that. But I actually had it once where with a client, she usually sends me about eight, nine minute video of, about how her week was. She sent me a one minute video one week. And it was like, yeah, everything's okay. Everything's great. Like training's going well. And I just text her. I didn't even reply to the check. And I text her and was like, is everything okay? And she replied saying, how did you do now? How did you know everything wasn't okay? I was like, because I'm not an idiot, because I just watched your video. Yeah. And I genuinely, yeah, I didn't believe that that could have happened if we'd have just been doing emails. I would never have known that from her because it wouldn't have been that relationship you have with someone. So you're building that relationship. But the amount of times on a video, like my clients will make a joke about me. <laughs> they'll, they'll say something about me. Yeah, quite common. Yeah. Um, they'll talk about something that I post on social media. They'll talk about, I play golf and they'll be like, I hope you had a good game, golf, whatever it is. But they form that relationship with you by even following you on social media. They talk about something you've seen. But they really then go, because of that relationship, they go deeper into things. Like I've had clients tell me things that, again, they've told me, they wouldn't, they've only told me, they've not even told their best mate yet. They, I've had people tell me about they're, they're pregnant, 
they've not even told their partner yet. I'm like, mm. fucking, why are you telling me for a second? Yeah. Like, it's but not mine, it, is it? It just, yeah, yeah. just comes out, like, <laughs> just comes out because, again, it affects their mood, their energy, and all this sort of stuff, right? So as you look at their video, you're looking over all their other information and you're then plotting about, you know, plotting, <laughs> like, it's, like something yeah. bad. You're, you're, then, you're then plotting out there next week and going, right, this is how I would change things. But the amount of times that I've, sit, I've looked at someone's spreadsheet with just the numbers before I've watched the video and gone, right, I'm going to go in on them because this has been shit. And I get their video and they're like, yeah, uh, mum's not very well. I had to take my dad to and from a few other places and all this sort of stuff. I'm like, okay, cool. That's a good week then. Like, I'll go, that's actually a good week then. And it's amazing how often the video can dictate the, the data and dictates yeah. what you view, how you view that data and the decision you're then going to make. And I don't understand how coaches can do it without that video, in my opinion. And then on the video, so what we'll also do is we'll drag up their photos. Like it might be four weeks apart and then you can talk them through. Okay, so when we send that, so yeah, so basically, so that's, just, so that's just me looking at their video with their um, data and me making a decision we then send them a video back. So that's them sending a video to us, right? That was the original question, Dan, that yeah. I gave you, but you went <clears> off on a tangent. I went off on so a tangent, yeah. To Sorry, mate, yeah. But then in terms of, the, so Mike's not going to do the video that we send them back. Yeah. So once we've seen all so that. So we'll, we'll drag it up, and obviously we will have made some notes or whatever, and we'll drag it up and we will look at their, their, their data and we'll say, uh, and we'll basically coach them in accordance to what's gone wrong, you know, good points, bad points, things that they need to work on, why, etc. Um, we'll break down everything that we, they need to do for the week ahead. Again, you know, depending on circumstance, it might be we talk them through a meal out, it might be that we back back off because they're under a bit of stress, whatever. But we'll talk them through it, we'll explain why we're doing stuff, and we'll, novel again, coach them. Um, <laughs> and then it allows us, if you're on video, to drag up pictures. So you might get pictures four weeks apart, for example, and you'll say, okay, here's tightened up, here's changed, here's that. And often you'll get a client go, back, God, I didn't realise how much has changed, because they might be sat there going... Nothing's changing, nothing's changing, nothing's changing mm -hmm. every week, right? But it takes you to drag it up. If you're not doing a video, there's absolutely no way you're going to be able to do that. You can yeah, then even also if you say to them, go look at week one to week four, they're, they're, and they go, oh, I still can't see it. Yeah. Whereas you can drag it up and you can, yeah, I, I highlight stuff and you can pinpoint it and you can go here, here, and they, and they go, yeah, you are right, you are the best. <laughs> um, and, um, and then you can get up their form videos. Some of them might send form videos. And literally, I critique them and go, okay, see here where, you know, uh, let's say we, let's pick an RDL. See here where um, your bum stops going backwards and uh, you carry on moving in a downwards motion. That's all coming from your back. You need to stop the motion when, you, when the bum stops. Like, and I literally can draw it on a screen. I get the little paint up and I can draw it on the screen of what they should look like. And that it's coaching. Like, yeah. it's actual coaching. So if you are charging massively upfront, thousands up front, and you're not giving that kind of service. Do you know, I would be, I'd, I'd feel slightly better about it if you were giving top quality service, if you were yeah. receiving a video, sending a video, giving form critique, being there available on text. I'd feel slightly easier about it if you were doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how we perceive coaching should be done. And it really shocked me actually that not many people do videos that it is checking forms or fucking email or type form or whatever. It really shocked me because I think that that is, co that is the coaching element of it. I don't understand how people are trying to create a business here whereby the fundamental part of your business, they're trying to do, they're trying to make it the least time consuming bit of it. Mm -hmm. For us, our client work is easily 50% of our week still, if not more. More, more, more for me. You've got more clients than me. Yeah. More so for me. It, easily, like, so 60, 70% of our week is taken up with client check-ins. But these, co these business mentors are trying to get coaches to minimize that to, to, to a minimum. Okay, so how are you going to, how's that going to work? I don't understand how you're trying to create a business. It's like Mars bars being like, yes, how, can we, how can we sell more, more Mars bars by creating less of them? Yeah. How do we do that? How do we, you know, it doesn't work. In my opinion, I just don't understand how they're trying to get to this place where they're minimizing the amount of work they can possibly do. Like, yeah, it's a great place to try and get to, but do it in the right order whereby you get full with work first. Yeah. And then you start to think about how you can scale and streamline all those sorts of things. Yeah. But we've got coaches here with 10, 12, 20 clients trying to scale and trying to streamline. I'm like, no, why don't you, why don't you, you can do that in a day. Like even if you do it properly, full video checking, you do that in a day. In that like, how, how do you need to streamline that? What are in you that trying mag. to streamline? In that mag, you're getting <laughs> coaches trying to scale and try to water down their service, reduce their service and client You can do 20 clients in a day. With 20 clients. You can do that in a day. That's like, a day's work. It's, video check-ins, full check-ins, that's a day's work. Like I said on another uh, thing, rather than thinking about how little can I can I get them, it's how much can I can I help them? How many times? Like, we'll just message. I, I'll pick out uh, my updates, right? People who might need a little nudge in the week or are struggling or whatever. And I'll message them. I'll go and text them and message them and be, be on them. Or I might have somebody that's away for a weekend uh, on a trip and I give them daily accountability. So I just get them to text me over a morning coffee and just let me know how the, the, the day went because they the might not be tracking the weekend. 
Like because it's it's such it's your, it's your, it's your job. You know, it's sort of your job though, isn't it? It's sort of your job though, isn't it? Yeah. So if you do that, what are the chances? Do you think you're increasing or decreasing the percentage chance of getting a client result? And the answer is increase, right? The answer has to be increased because yeah. you're giving them a better service, building a better relationship so they'll stay longer and they're getting a better mm. service at it. So it's, it's, you're going to increase it. So if you get a better success rate, if you have more success with the coaches that you're co- uh, the clients that you're coaching, do you think that that's going to be better or worse for your business? Or better? So why is everybody doing the opposite of those things? Yeah. Like why are you doing the opposite of those things? You're making your business worse by listening p- to people who don't care about your business. They care about their business. They care about their money. They care about their, their Stripe screenshots. They care about them, their next fancy car. That's what they care about. They don't care about your business. Yeah. They might tell you that you do, but they don't care about it. And a lot, a lot of you might have heard horror stories about when people try to leave or whatever and the, the tonality changes and there's threats and there's this and there's that. We, we hear about it all, right? That's a prime example that they don't care. They care about them and lining their own pockets because when you leave, mm-hmm. th- th- it's like they never existed. You know? yeah. Yeah, and existed. look, you're, you're coaching human beings. You're not coaching robots. You need to create connections with these people. That's what they struggle with up to this point in terms of their nutrition and training. They can go and download training plans, meal plans, all that shit from Google, right? They, they need a human that understands them and gets them. And I think that that's being lost in coaching. And I think it's exactly why we're doing what we're doing in terms of coaching coaches. And, and the stuff that we go into isn't the businessy shit. It isn't that stuff. It's helping people upskill their coaching ability so that they get a better business for it. That's what we've done. That's how we've got to where we are. And I think that it's just lost and no one's talking about it. And because it's slower, it's not as fancy. It doesn't sound as sexy online. Of course, it's not gonna not gonna go as far, and business mentors aren't gonna talk about it. But the reality is that I don't know many good coaches out there, like truly good coaches mm. that get results and results and results, and put themselves out there on social media on a regular basis who are struggling. That's just me being honest. Like you need to be able to show that you get results. And I think a lot of people are trying the hacks, they're trying all these things that just aren't getting them to where they want to be, and because they're not patient enough. It's just about being patient. You tell your clients the same thing on their check-ins. You tell them exact, exactly the same thing. You're not going to get this in 12 weeks. You're not going to get where you want to be in that time frame. You're comparing yourself to people who've been doing this for years. Say the same thing to yourself because that's where you're at. And it's about developing the skills and the habits over time that's going to get you where you want to be, not trying to find the next hack that's going to get you that 10K month that someone's going to screenshot and that's all they care about. There you go. So uh, mm. that was uh, video check-ins. Go and like us and all of that stuff you know you know what to do you're better at social media or fucking you're probably younger than me maybe maybe you're younger than me um like and you know put it on your myspace account and bebo and all that um do all of that for us um but yeah we will uh we'll see you next time see you in a bit